Hey everybody, it is Sue here and I'm so glad that you're with me today. I'm working in my Dilusions small journal and I'm working with the Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks. I have, I, I'm not sure if it's the first set or the second set, but I have just the one set and I'm, I'm considering getting the second set because I really do like them quite a bit. I love the way that they work. Like what I do, and Dina had suggested this, is before you put it on the paper, just dunk it in water real quick, just like you would like a paintbrush. And it makes the crayon very, very, very smooth. And um, what's the word? It's just like creamy, I guess is the word. So there's a huge difference in using these crayons totally dry or putting them in water first and then using them. And you can see I'm definitely, every time I'm putting it in water before I put it down to the paper. And when it starts getting dry, I put it back in the water. The color is actually much, much more vibrant when you do it this way. Now I know you can put it down and then put water on it. I know that. <laughs> But this way just works better. It just does for these particular crayons. Uh, so anyway, I do like them so much that I am thinking about getting the other set. And, you know, um, maybe someday, not just now. I have plenty now to keep me busy. So I'm going to try not to spend any money for a little while. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. And I'm using Dina Wakely's Her Extra Thick Gel Medium. And I went through my stash and I showed you the different pieces of, you know, like jelly prints and just, just different ephemera that I have that I wanted to put on this two-page spread. So this... This spread that I'm working on, I had done, I don't know what, originally. There was something else on these two pages. And I had come in with white gesso and covered it up. But you can still see the other colors there. You know, that's from whatever I had on there before. And I like it. I like having those, you know, little spots of color here and there. Um, and I'm just working with water, um, with the, the uh, gel medium and just putting down, you know, the paper. I, you know, I'm, I'm overlapping. I have an idea in my mind, just a little bit of what I want to do. I'm really just playing around. I'm just having fun, um, you know, with the different mediums and my stash of like collaging type stuff now with this gel medium it will make the crayons the cribble scribble the scribble sticks react it definitely will but you know it, it worked out quite well i didn't really have too too much of an issue with that so um and i tried to be careful and I'm just going to lift it up here just to show you what I have so far. And I really, really like that so far. And I don't know. I just, I don't know if I saw it on another video, which is very possible. But just that whole vertical thing going on there with all that color, it was just, you know, pleasing to my eye. And, and I always like to do some horizontal with the vertical. And, and, you know, that's pulling in, you know, all these little pieces of tissue paper and whatever. So I just continue putting all of that down. And I like how it is looking at this point. And I'm just making sure all the pieces are down. Now this is... Um, a piece of um, like a seam binding type thing and I'm trying to rip it it wouldn't rip which I was really surprised but I guess because it's it's the oh I don't even know how to explain it it was on a diagonal what is that called with material I forget what it's called I want to say the grain 
was on a diagonal, but I don't think that's the right word for material. And so I couldn't tear it. So I ended up cutting it because I didn't want it that wide. And again, I'm going with that whole vertical look or uh, horizontal at this point. And just getting all that fun stuff down. Because if you watched um, a video from a couple weeks ago, I showed where I found all kinds of seam binding that my aunt and my grandmother had because I had, I have purchased their house, what, how long ago now? Um, 18 years ago. And I'm still finding just so much fun stuff around. <laughs> And this is just really um, a paper that I received in a swap, I probably from 2014, 2015, from Crazy Island Family. I think it was like a border swap. So that may look like it's printed paper, like a pattern paper, but it's not. Somebody actually did that, um, drew the lines and everything. And I thought it was perfect because I do like to bring some you know, black or black and white onto my pages. So there we have the layering going on again. You know, and sometimes I have to admit, sometimes it's a little hard to figure out when to stop. It really is. You really have to have some control. <laughs> And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But since I did cover up some of the yellow and the orange scribble stick, I'm like, okay, well, let me get some color on top of all of the paper that I put down with the gel medium. And I went a little bit closer here for you. So now I'm just getting the, like I said, the, the color on top of the little pieces that I put down. And for whatever reason, this was so enjoyable. I just, you know, just just play. Play with it. Play with the this, this stuff in your stash. And it was just fun. I totally enjoyed this. I mean, it's not a masterpiece, but I love it. I love it. I love it. So do you guys, are you like me where like you finish a page um, and like you'll leave it open for whether it's days or a week or even weeks just so that you can look at it and appreciate it like I try not to work on you know anything really whether it's a tag or a um, Rolodex card or a two-page spread whatever I don't want to just work on it and close it up and put it away so I like to have it open where I can see it for at least a few days and appreciate it. So of course this is the Dilution stamp and I'm using the Archival Jet Black Ink to get a little bit more of visual, visual texture. And now I have the Dina Wakely Archival Ink and that is actually also her stencil that I have right there. I think that is. Is that her stencil? I'm looking at the shape of it. Yes, that came f with um, one of her stamp sets. So I'm pulling in some more orange. So I have like a lot of lines, right? A lot of straight lines. And now I'm getting in some circular, um, I don't want to say images, you know, shapes. And that also helps to soften those very bold vertical lines that I have going on in this particular two page spread. So I finished that up and now I have, oh, yep, I'm showing you there. It came from, from a stamp set. And this is just a piece of um, what was it called? Um, iron ironing cloth or something like that that I also got from my my grandmother's stuff, and I just thought it would look really good on here, so I just put down some of the 
extra thick gel and put that little piece of cloth down. And now I'm going back to the archival ink. And of course that cloth that I put down is way too clean. <laughs> it needs some stuff on it, right? <laughs> We need to dirty that up a little bit and get some color on there. So that's what I was doing there. And now I'm trying to figure out, you know, what stamp to put on there. Now keep in mind that this is not the first thing I've ever done on these pages, right? So it's very textured. Between whatever I had on there before and the gesso that I put on, and then all this other stuff that I put on, it's very bumpy. And I knew that. So I really pushed hard with this. And obviously it did not come out perfectly, but that's all right. I just went in and filled in certain areas just a little bit, you know, just so it would give the image enough definition to where, you know, it looked like the stamp. And so I just kind of do that and I smudge and add a little bit more and smudge with my finger until I get it to where, you know, it looks decent. And I was happy with that. And now, oh, what am I doing? Oh, this is where I pulled, I pulled the sentiment from that other stamp set with the hearts. And you know what? Um, let me go look and see what it says. Okay, I pulled out the two-page spread and it says, it is, it is love that makes the impossible possible. And it fit perfectly on that piece of cloth right there. And now I have some twine. It is orange and yellow, two different colors. My friend um, gave this to me and it was too long. At first, I wanted to have like a lot on there. And I'm like, no, that's too much. The page isn't big enough. And so I cut some down. And I'm using that Dina Wakely gel medium just to get it down. You know, and when you use gel medium, sometimes it looks white. It is white. But when it dries, it does. It dries clear. So don't ever be afraid to you know, use a good amount of gel medium because it, it dries clear and you can't see it. So that's how I got that twine down onto the page. And that just adds another shape because it's kind of like a wavy kind of thing going on there. And here I'm showing you the two page spread, nice and slow. And I'll have some photos at the end here for you to see as well. But look at how nice that stamped that that um, sentiment. I really like the way that it looked on that that cloth. And I'll be using that cloth more because I liked it. I, I think it it made a really nice place to stamp something, right? Because how the heck else would I have put any sentiment <laughs> on this? It just, it would have been very, 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 very difficult. So I was happy with that. Very, very happy. I'm trying to get up really close so you can see all of the layers there. And remember, some of it is from Another project I did, who knows when, how long ago, probably three or four years ago. But that's it. Uh, here are the photos, and let me know if you have any questions. Please go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment, and I would love to get back to you. And definitely go ahead and check out my other videos. All right, thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.